I've actually never regretted yeah. doing this. Yeah. If I had to do it over, I'd do it over in, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, and I'd do it the exact same way. Right. You know. So uh, when I was in high school, it, it I was trying to decide between being an artist and an architect. Yeah. And it was you know one was a job, right. and the other one was like all right I, I'm gonna have to bust my ass to, to get this to work. Right. Uh, and it took a very bad chemistry teacher to help make my decision because <laughs> I was like, well, crap, now I don't like science. I'm going to need that for uh, uh, architecture, yeah. uh, obviously physics and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so I was like, all right, well, I guess it's art. Okay. So well, in, in a sense, I'm, I'm grateful and and very, you know, angry at that teacher. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just when it first came out, I was like, oh, I got to watch That's this. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. My so, pleasure. The, the way I usually start these is the point of this is not to talk about how to become an artist or how to get a job or okay. how to become a comic artist. It's more about like the why of doing it. You know? Okay. And it's like looking at you, you know, you've been somebody who's been able to be a really successful artist. You've had this really great career, worked with some really great artists, but you're still grinding really hard, you know? <laughs> and it's like, I, I'm always curious about like why, like I think the biggest, the bigger challenge about art is not learning the technique. It's about like, how do you do this for... 40, 50, 60 years of right. that, and still get enjoyment out of it. Right. You know? Yeah. I think there's maybe a, a, a grain of masochism yeah. <laughs> mixed into, well, it's hard. into the whole mix, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's about loving the medium that much, right? So yeah. as a kid, my brother and I loved collecting and reading the yeah. comics, and we added something to it every time, too, where we would actually try and draw yeah. the stuff we had just read. And so right. we would sit down and draw together. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially with specific artists, you yeah. know, like the Neil Adams and, and right. uh, Byrne and Mike Zach. And so all these artists that we really loved reading, we kind of try to do that. Right. And I think that that was what it was born for me and that I, I loved not just reading them, I loved like creating them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the early age, I was recreating them, but I think that was like my first step in, in right. that direction. So. Yeah, well, it, it, to me, it seems like the thing that drives somebody is like that first initial love for it. Yeah. You know, that's oh, the yeah, important yeah. part. Yeah. Like, what were you doing as a kid versus the thing that like, you know, you feel like might make money and that you should be doing, you know, that's going to be the thing that you get burnt yeah. out on and just hate, you know. And I, I think it's really cool that, you know, somebody can dedicate their lives to drawing Batman or drawing anime or whatever and they can you know make a nice life for themselves yeah. it's not like you know everyone has to be a banker to find a place in this world right you know which I, I think from one nihilistic perspective it's like uh, that that's like the more efficient thing to do you right know? like make more make more money and you know more right. successful yeah but, yeah yeah yeah. You know. yeah I mean it's the easier way to make money uh, yeah. I guess and so um, I think it stops being an equation for for us. Yeah. The, obviously, you need it. Uh, if if I think if you polled twenty artists and said if you could do this for free, but everything else is taken care of yeah. for you, your your family, your house, everything, right. you do it in a heartbeat. Because yeah. then it's like, oh, okay, I can do it for the enjoyment of it. Yeah. And so having to do it for the money, I think, adds that little bit of a. Uh, I think that's the, the, the caveat to it, right? right. The, the, the other shoe that drops. drops. And so, um, uh, but the, again, the love for it is what makes you want to come back to it. Yeah. Well, I, I would say you, you probably still would be doing it even if you didn't have to worry about money. Yeah. You know, like oh, 100%, yeah, yeah, like yeah. 1 million percent. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, as I get older, what are you going to do when you retire? I'm like, retire. Uh, <laughs> I want to draw. I'm probably going to keep painting. It's just yeah. going to be for myself instead of for someone else. Yeah. And yeah. That, that'll be the right. difference is that I, I, it's it's still, to me, it's still art. It's still a medium. It's still painting, right. whether I do it digitally or, or you know, on right. paper or canvas. And so right now I'm doing it for... For the man. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and I, I guess uh, I, nowadays, and I, I'm sure it's been like this for all of humanity, but the metric for a lot of people's art is like, how much money did I make off of it? Right. Or how much, how many likes did I get on Instagram? Or how many followers do I have? Or any of that stuff. Whereas like the real metric, the one that is like going to lead towards your m more fulfillment is like, it doesn't matter how many likes or how much money I got from this. It's like how much enjoyment I got out of this as a person. Right. You know? Yeah, definitely. Cause, yeah, because I, I think that like, even it, you know, you're obviously a very successful artist. It's like doing it now feels the same as when you were doing it at the very beginning. You're just in your room by yourself, like, you know, right, right. Yeah, it's come yeah. full circle to that, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I do miss the 
the studio days and the yeah. camar- camaraderie and the, the collaborative, all that stuff is such a great yeah. feeling. It's so, it's so inspiring as an artist, right? Because you're, um, uh, you can have the crappiest day and come back the next day and you don't feel too inspired and all you have to do is walk down the hall and check out what, you know, Lee or Carlos or, yeah. you know, Jim is doing and you're like, oh yeah, I'm back in. Okay, right. let's do this. And right. so, um, it's easier nowadays as a freelancer to pull that off because all you have to do is go online. Yeah. You go online, you, you, you reference all that stuff where yeah. when I kind of got started, there was no online. <laughs> right. right. Well, yeah, I, I guess even going back more on that thought, like community is such a big element to like finding the love in it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 There's so many, many of you sharing, not only in creating the art, but you're both driving to finish the piece, to finish the book, to turn yeah. it on time, to get right. the book out on time. And, and, and in the early days of the studio, it was, if the book doesn't go, we don't get paid. Yeah, right. Because it was like, that was what was kind of keeping the studio afloat was the, the production of, of, the, right. of the books. Well, and you were all suffering together. Yes, right. right. Like and really that, sucks, if right? that builds, uh, you know, a bond. Yeah. That, and that to this day, when we see each other, it's, you know, we immediately go back into goofing around and... Yeah. Riff, riffing off each other and goof, you know, messing with each other, all that yeah. stuff, I think, comes from spending so much time together. Right. Well, and I, I guess nowadays, like, people, you know, might look at their situation that they might be, you know, in a place that doesn't have that many artists or, you know, they feel like they're not capable of doing it. And often I think that something like building that sort of community is right in front of everyone's, like, it's right in everyone's, like, backyard, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, going to a coffee shop and sketching, maybe you meet like-minded artists and you create something like that yeah. like for from what i know something like Wildstorm was created just like people were sleeping on the ground yeah. you know it was very much like a frat house it was a, a condo <laughs> yeah you yeah. know right. with like four guys in there trying to draw yeah get a book yeah. out so <laughs> yeah yeah um well I, I i you know from the outside looking in a lot of people might look at you know working in comics or you know working on big projects is this extremely glamorous you know, special thing. And it is for the, for the heart, yeah. but it's not like, you know, you're, it, it's not like it's a nine to five job where you're not suffering. And right. You know. I, I don't think nine to five, nine to five exists. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's funny. There's weeks when every hour of each day is just kind of spoken for. Yeah. And, and then a lot of those hours are spoken for by, you know, page two, page yeah. three, yeah. page four. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, yeah. There's the glamour side of it. I guess you see it at the conventions, right. where we're sitting at tables and folks are coming up for signatures and asking for photos and all that stuff. But right. you know, the real work goes on. You know, right. at, at two a.m. Well, and you're not recognized most of the time either, right? Uh, visually, yeah. At, in convention halls, yes. Well, no, and but, but like nowhere walk, else. Yeah, like walking down the street, right? <laughs> yeah. well, like, it's happened two or three times. Yeah. Uh, right. Out in the wild, yeah. and 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 it's cool, but it, you know. It, and 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 it's exciting and it's it's cool because obviously the the fan has to uh, not only recognize you but you know have the not the courage to right to come up and say hey are you so and so so you know and it's you know some of us get recognized more than others i mean like yeah. jim gets recognized all the time oh yeah of course uh yeah. and but i'm you know Josh Paul Fisher if i take my hat off it's like like if I take my hat off, shave my goatee, and put glasses on, I can Clark Kent through oh, yeah, the rest of, of my life, and no one would know what happened to Alex. <laughs> Is your hat like your signature? You know. I, yeah, I wear. It, it's funny because I wear. I start wearing it because of sports. Yeah. Because um, when I sweat, I sweat. I mean, a lot of us sweat through our head, and yeah. so I just put hats on so that I wouldn't have to be wiping the sweat off all the time. Yeah. Uh, and it carried over to conventions where you're sitting there for eight hours. It's like my head's going to get all shiny. Right. Because uh, I don't have a lot of hair up there. And so I'd rather you look at the top of a hat than, you know, a uh, shiny, sweaty head. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, again, I feel like going back to that, I, a lot of people aspire to be the great, famous, amazing artist. And that, that's like, you know, a perfectly fine thing to strive for. But you know, it, again, it's not, it, it is not glamorous, you know? It's like right. that fame that, you know, everyone, like, they look towards you or some famous comic artist or whoever as their idols, but then the reality of it is it's not, you know, it, it's not like you're being recognized everywhere. Right. You know, it's, right, right, like, right. again, most of it is, like, you, like, you, you know, you brought your stuff in here to get some work done while we're recording this podcast. Yeah. It's like, you're still grinding all right. the time. Well, a moneymaker is not our face, it's our hands, right? Yeah. And so that's right. that's the difference between us and, and you know, Hollywood folks. And so, yeah. the, you know, the part of what, what brings them their fame is their looks, their acting, and, and that stuff. And yeah. so, obviously, they get recognized much more right. that way. Every now and then, there's a few of us that, you know, kind of 
transcend that and, and become very rec recognizable visually yeah. and through their art. Yeah. I mean, it, we've already talked about Jim and guys like that. So, yeah. right. Well, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, with, with all this stuff, I, I always ask people if it's like, if, if it was worth it to pursue the money side of art. Like, do you think it was worth it for you to, like, you, you know, you might have gotten a lot better than you would have otherwise, but maybe, uh, have, has there been periods in your life where you've been like, you know, maybe it would have been better to just have art as a hobby and pursue the nine to five thing? Something else. Uh, I've actually never regretted yeah. doing this. Yeah. If I had to do it over, I'd do it over in, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, and I'd do it the exact same way. Right. You know, so uh, when I was in high school, it, it I was trying to decide between being an artist and an architect. Yeah. And it was, you know, one was a job right. and the other one was like, all right, I, I'm going to have to bust my ass to, to get this to work right. uh, and it took a very bad chemistry teacher to help make my decision because <laughs> I was like well crap now I don't like science I'm going to need that for uh, uh, architecture yeah. uh, obviously physics and all that kind of stuff and yeah. so I was like alright well I guess it's art right. well, so in, in a sense I'm, I'm grateful and and very, you know, angry at that teacher. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, so he was just a bad teacher? Like, he didn't teach you correctly? Right? She made it very boring, very... Okay. Very... Um, By the books. Not even that. It, it was so just uh, unengaging, I guess. And so it's like, oh, I can't... I, if I can't sit through an hour a day of this with right. her, yeah. how am I going to do eight hours a day? For the next 10,000 hours. Right, for the, the rest of my life. Yeah. If, right. if, if I have to involve this, obviously chemistry is not even a part of that, but yeah. uh, science has, has a, plays a big role in, in, in that, yeah. that career. And so it really became a, okay, I, I'm not one who likes to stick to yeah. rules right. of everything. Um, not necessarily like a, a rebel right. in that sense, but scientific rules that have to apply to the work that you're producing, where this is more, you know, I can do whatever I want, yeah. paint whatever I want. Well, I, I guess an important part of that, I think, is, like, some relationship with failure. Because maybe if, hmm? like, you tied yourself to that identity of being an architect to the point where you were, like, like unwilling to admit you might have, like, you're not great at that sort of learning, like, just the super boring academic yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, maybe that would have been, like, the wrong decision, and, like, forcing yourself into that, where it's, like, right. you know, you admitting, like, okay, you know, maybe this isn't my strong suit. I'm going to do something else. Hmm. You know, that led to you having this great career and right. um i think often people look at their own failures and they're like man i i shouldn't even try you know i'm not good enough at all to right even, right you know, yeah some, you know. I, I i you're right i think once you make that that jump or that decision it becomes the okay now i have to go all in yeah i really have to put all all, all into this if not if you know right. i can't i can't say that i tried right. unless i actually do this. really try yeah yeah right. yeah and so that was kind of one of the my mantras was at that time there was no to have your portfolio looked at you had to go to a convention yeah and back then there was maybe five conventions in the u.s yeah and so it it, it was more about going to san diego one year showing your stuff yeah getting critiqued and coming back the next year right building on what you got critiqued on right and, and, you know, I think it, it's easier now because there's instant gratification sometimes. If you can if you can find someone that's willing to look at your work, yeah. after that critique, you can go back and a month later go, hey, here's new stuff. Right. Hey, here's new stuff. And so uh, it, it was more of a commitment to, to, the, to the trade, yeah. trying to get into it. Right. And being persistent. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I, I think a lot of people might look at that and they're like, oh, you know, I was said no to once. I might as well quit, you know? Right. Like, and that willingness to accept to, you know, look at critique and be like, oh, this person gave me something to do. I'm going to go try and do that and then actually yes. show an effort. That enthusiasm is actually the thing I think generally that makes somebody successful. Right. And that's what's going to make you better, right? It's it's like if a professional is telling me, you got to work on this, it's like, okay, yeah. I'll work on that. Right. I can, I can do that. I can be told, hey, uh, this needs to improve. I can definitely go back and work at it to make yeah. it better. And so... Um, that was great, and and I, I really haven't gone to art school and doing critique sessions yeah. uh, for my art classes. Uh, helped me kind of build that thick skin, yeah. where I got some some great reviews and I got some bad reviews, and 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 um, 
nowadays when people ask me for advice about you know how do you handle the, the portfolio reviews, I tell them, don't just listen to the bad stuff. Yeah. Pay attention to what they like, so you can continue to do that. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I that was able to to, to focus on because my portfolio reviews were critique the pencils, critique the inks. Hey, I really like your colors. It yeah. took me a while to clue in the fact that that's what people they had nothing to say about it other than like, hey, that's really great stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, it was Gregory Wright who was looking through my portfolio. And he's like, there's no reason why you shouldn't be working in comics right now as yeah. a colorist. Right. And that's when I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm such an idiot. Right. Well, and you know, going down that path of wanting to work in comics and just trying out a bunch of different things, you know. Like you land on something eventually that you're like, oh, this is it. You know, this is the thing. But you never would have gotten there if you didn't, you know, like try out those other right, things first. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, in, in art school, it was about trying out oil and watercolor and, yeah. and the different medium because then I can say, I don't like oil. I did it. Right. I know I don't like it. Yeah. And so it was the same thing, right, where yeah. you're – I tried penciling. I tried inking. I just wasn't as good at it as I, as I am at the, at the other stuff. Well, and I, I meet a lot of people, you know, parents or whoever that talk to their kids about, you know, you can't be an artist or whatever. And their impression is that artists have to be born with it or they have to have some inherent talent or, or whatever, you know, and or you have to start really young. But it's not like you can like it's not like if you didn't start when you were 12 years old that you're completely hopeless. Like right. I know plenty of people that start when they're like 25 yeah. and go off and have great art careers because they threw themselves into it and they were mature enough at the time to actually put their heart and soul into it and treat yeah, it like yeah. a job, you know. Uh, my ninth grade teacher was 45. She decided she wanted to learn how to draw yeah. birds. Yeah. And she taught herself how to draw, and she drew the most amazing birds within two years of, of deciding this. Yeah. And that's when I thought I realized we all have it. Right. We just have to get past that. The first few drawings are just going to suck. Yeah, right. And then realize that if I have the passion for it, I... I'm going to push myself to get past that. Yeah. It, it happens to everybody. I think athletes have it. Obviously, some are way more talented than others. Yeah. Right? And some of them, it, to some of them, it just comes easily. Right. Uh, but I think we all really have it. I think we all really have it, and we all really need to just kind of be ready to get past that part of our lives or that our careers or whatever it is that we're trying for the first time, knowing, man, I'm, this is really crappy. Yeah, yeah. But see the good and the bad of it, improve the bad. So right. that you can make it, they make it into a good, and right. just kind of keep pushing yourself. Well, I, and I've heard somebody like somebody describe style as something like your actual style is all of your mistakes put into one. Like it, it's like the sum of all your mistakes is your style. You yeah. Know? yeah. Like if every like everyone's different, maybe the mistakes that you make and all the different things is actually the thing that you provide value for. Like everyone is good and bad at something else. Like. I could go down the list and I would never stop naming things that I'm bad at, you know, <laughs> like I'm bad. I have like, again, I, I, I use this example. I don't know how to change the oil in my car. You okay. know? I live in my van. I don't know how to change the oil. Uh -oh. that's, yeah. that's, a, that's dumb, right? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty dumb. That's something you need to work on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. But it's like, you know, yeah. I, I could get by, you know, yeah. there's someone else that like, if I really need it can help me with that. Yes. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's part of, of, of life too. My wife criticizes me. It's like, Hey, do you want to tear down the 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 um, um, the patio yeah. in the back? You're like, well, I could do it, right. but it's going to take me eight hours. Right. In those eight hours, I can make twice as much than what it costs us to pay someone else to do it. Yeah, right. And so, it's, and they're good at it. Yeah, right. And they can actually haul it away. Right. Because for me, it's going to be I have to tear it down. Now I have to t find a place to haul it away. I got two days of work. But, right. right. And yeah. so, in my head, I'm doing the math. Yeah. Of of of, I'd like to try it. I could do it. Yeah. But the efficiency of having someone do it for you who is paid to do that. Yeah. Like you know, as an artist, I'm like, well, you know, hire me to do your portrait. Right. Because you could try it. Yeah. And and without any experience, it's going to take you you know a long time okay. to get there. Yeah. So. Well, there's a famous I think it's Picasso quote of like, you know, a woman. Walked to, up to him at dinner and was like, hey, can you draw a portrait of me? And he does like a five-second little sketch of her. And she's like, oh, uh, uh, I want to pay you. How much? And he says something like $60,000. And she's like, what? That took you 20 seconds to do. And he says, no, that took me 80 year, or 60 right. years or something. 60 yeah. years to get to, to be able to do it like yeah. this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's not, you're not paying for the, you know, 
45 minutes that it took me to do your commission, yeah. you're paying for my, you know, 30 plus years of experience yeah, yeah. in the field. That got me to be able to do it in this time because it, right. it's, it's the, 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 the accruement of all the... Your taste, and, yeah. you know, you know, right. what thousands works, of what hours doesn't work, just yeah. like, you know, sitting there just yeah. messing around with stuff yeah. and... Like somebody actually might just be paying for the sheer amount of failures that you've had, you know, because <laughs> you've right. experimented so Oof, much, right? And I'm not charging enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's the other side of art is that it's like it, it's like an artist is so like it's it's only around once, you know. It's like I mean, uh, you know, going to a sad note, it's like Kim Jong Gi died yeah. recently. Oh uh, yeah. You know, he, he's he was such a like a special talent, and now he's gone, and it's like right. Yeah, it's it's like, it's a void, right? There's yeah. no one like him. Yeah, and they're you know they probably never will. Yeah, uh, especially with art, it's so different from artist to artist. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, it's a great loss because he not only was an amazing talent, he was an inspiration to so many of us. Yeah. Right, you, yeah. you you would it, he was kind of like um, the best sitcom on TV. Right, yeah. you always stop to watch. Right, when you whether it was live or it was recorded or on Instagram. When when he put that pen to that paper right. canvas wall, whatever he was doing, you stopped and you yeah. watched because you knew how good it was. In the anticipation of like, I've seen him do amazing things every time. I want to see how he gets there. Yeah, right. Because in your mind, uh, as an artist, you're blown away by like the decision making. That's you know he's kind of like messy. He's already four steps yeah. ahead of where he is right now. In his head, he's already drawn. The entire you know, thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so he's already anticipating what's coming with what he's drawing now, where a lot of us are just kind of like, like, oh my God, I just got to figure out. out this stupid leg, and I can't get there, and he's already drawn the leg, the arm, and the pig that's sitting on the leg, right? Yeah. And you're like, shit. Yeah. Right, well, and I guess it's like, a, you know, he doesn't speak English, but I feel like his art just speaks so well that, like he speaks universally, a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah it's yeah, so yeah. profound, you know, yeah. It's so cool. Like I've never again. I, I uh, he came by Proco a couple times. Mm-hmm. And I, I hung out with him a couple times, but I never we could never talk. Right, right, right. Know? But just like watching him draw was like, oh, this is so like it's, it's such better a than thing. any yeah. hype talk I've ever had from any artist. Yeah, I, I, I did get to interact with him a couple times, and it was that through an interpreter, or yeah. we were in a dinner once with Jim and him, and he had his sketchbooks. Yeah. And uh, all I could do was like, can I just like right. hold it? Yeah, right. <laughs> I yeah, just yeah. want to touch it. Yeah. I'm a very tactile person, but to be able to flip through it and just yeah. go like, oh my God. It's like, what, what am I fuck? doing painting? Because I'm nothing yeah. compared to this. Yeah. Uh, but he, I mean, I think he's such a, such a great, amazing talent. He was such a great, amazing talent and, and such a sad loss for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the art world and the, and, and, you know. The creative world. Yeah, absolutely. I, I saw that like Taiki Wakiti commented on his uh, post. Oh, okay. You know, it's like you know, he's transcended. Just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Um, yeah. The stuff with Stevie Oki and all yep. this, you know. oh, just yeah. you can go on for hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I guess with all the stuff, I think that there's like a finite element to it as well. Like, um, I, I don't exactly know where I'm going with this, but like, I, I guess it goes to something like valuing the right things because even though that if somebody theoretically draws the most and does the most studying it's not like it's going to be worth it for them completely you know yeah like like you've had this career but it's like there are things that you might value more than art at this point you know it's like family and well yeah I think having pets and you know it's like <laughs> like being a great artist is not the end-all be-all thing to having a fulfilling life yeah i think early on it, it you know art was such a strong part of the life and and as you get married like you say you have kids yeah. your priority is to rearrange and and it becomes a means to an end it's like so art is something that i love and it's helping me yeah have a family and provide for them and right. provide a, a really good life for them yeah. so it, it becomes um you know not monetized but it just becomes part of your life yeah yeah as right. you add different components to it yeah yeah I, I had someone describe it to me something they're not an artist they're just somebody who does art you know it's just kind of like a like just so happens to be painting or something but it could be you know plumbing or being an electrician or you know any of those types of things right 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 yeah yeah it, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um yeah does it sound is that okay with the uh, i think it's probably okay, okay. It, 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 i think it'll make for cool audio at the very okay. least. But, yeah I, I guess i guess now it's like 
do you have any like over because i i know i talk to a lot of people and they're always talking about like what motivates them like what's do you have any particular goals that you're trying to achieve at this point or is it um i think ultimately and then we kind of talked about it i i do want to get to the point where i can just wake up and and go paint when i want to what i want to right right and i think that's the the ultimate goal and and so um at this point i'm still kind of painting for someone else yeah um and I'm still enjoying it, and I think that's why I'm still doing it. You know, at, at the end of of the week, uh, however ugly it was, and however many hours of sleep I didn't get because of it, uh, I still want to do it. Yeah. Next week. Right. And and I think as long as I can continue to do that, and my body lets me do that, uh, uh, as a work goal, like a short term kind of goal, almost like a. Uh, New Year's resolution kind of thing. It's just like if I can eliminate like all nighters, yeah. if I can turn this into more of a nine to five yeah. kind of a gig, right. then I think that's definitely uh, something that that right. will open it up for me to be able to do more stuff with yeah. my family. Right. So and it comes back to that, right? Uh, yeah. Time, time, yeah, time for my family. Time for me to goof around and do other things. Yeah. Because artistically, the, this is great, uh, but there's other things that I I want to do. That I haven't been able to do for a long time, like just paint, yeah. uh, right. to kind of continue to explore my style, yeah. my painting style. Right. And so that's you know I think that's my goal is to to get to the point where I can work on my art. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Excuse me. Um, well, yeah, I also have a lot of friends who like they're great painters, but then they're like p- taking up like leather working or something, you know, or okay. cycling or yeah, you know, like like other creative outlets that aren't just painting. Yeah, I build model kits yeah i used to do it as a kid and now that i can actually paint them right and make them look realistic right i'm like oh, oh hell yeah. that's cool let's do that that's sick as fuck dude <laughs> well I, I remember i was i was watching one of the south park documentaries and the, the, those guys were talking about how you know i guess i think it was trey he was talking about how he would just buy expensive lego kits and mm-hmm. he would put them together just because it was nice to have like a creative thing that was like laid out for them, they don't have to like put all their brain put it power. put it in. You're right. They don't have to create it. They just have to put it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think that's uh, uh, that's a great point. That you're right. You don't. You, it's creative in the end, but some it's like it's a guided thing, so you don't have to think about it. You just do it. Yeah, that's yeah. probably why I enjoy doing Legos too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never thought about that. And the model kits as well. I think uh, there's more of an interaction with that where I can make decisions as to. How detail I'm going to paint this? How much more detail I'm going to add to that? And so yeah, well, I, I I talk to a lot of people as well about this, but like, art is a really personal thing, and it's really hard not to tie your personal self worth to the quality of your art. And uh, for I guess for those some people, maybe like having a like a, a thing that's set out for them that they can like remove their ego from can actually help them. Um, I don't know, like have a cool thing at the end while also being meditative and like lets them practice uh yeah not tying so much of their ego to the quality of the uh, final result yeah and at the end of the day i mean if your name's what's going on there right and so that you want to make sure that that every time that 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 you produce something that with your name going on it that it's 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 the best piece you've done up to date yeah uh, you know people ask What's the best piece that you've ever done? I said, well, I hope it's the next one. Yeah, right. Right? It's, you kind of move on from the, the past one because you want to keep being artistically relevant. Right. Do, do you care about your legacy at all, you think? Yes. And I think it's because I've, I've, I've worked for so long yeah. at it that I, you know... Um, Want to be remembered for it? Sure. I want to be remembered for good work, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, hey, that that guy was not only uh, a talented artist and colorist, yeah. but he was also someone that, that I liked working with, right? And a medium with collaboration is, is the, 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 the key word. Right. You want to be known as someone that people like to work with. Yeah. So that, I think that's the two things that I like, you know, to be said is talented and and, uh, and good to work with. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I guess, you know, I, I think it's a controversial thing, but I think there's this romantic idea that somebody has to get 100% of their value internally when it comes to being an artist. And I think that 
finding some measure of satisfaction from the external validation of it, like working on big projects, doing cool things, like you know, getting rewarded financially for it. Th those aren't actually bad incentives for you know doing artwork. You know, right? And I think, and I've done all of I've done the big projects and the little projects and the fun projects and the cover for the yeah. the up and comer and all that stuff. And at the end of the day, it becomes the uh, like I said before, if you could tell me that I would. I don't have to get paid, but everything else is taken care of. Yeah, I would do it in a heartbeat. Right, like you would, you would let go of the big projects just to focus. Uh, on. Whatever you want to send me, yeah. I'll do. Okay, as long as I'm taken care of and I don't have to worry about money. Right, I'll do whatever you want for me for yeah. you. And and it's funny, uh, I just signed a, a non-exclusive contract with Marvel. Yeah, uh, and and they're saying, what do you want to do? Yeah, what do you want to work on? And it's kind of like, uh, like you know, I've been with DC for so long that yeah. there's so many. Marvel characters right. that I love that I I can give you a laundry list yeah uh, but if you're asking for my favorites it's like you know here's here's five yeah and then here's five more right. and and just if something comes up I'm happy to do it and then and, and my list included I also love these artists yeah that have been exclusive with Marvel for years and so I would love to work with them right but it's funny because it's like I don't care just send me something yeah, I'm yeah, having yeah. so much fun right. uh, I think Working for Marvel has kind of invigor reinvigorated my my love for the medium because I'm working on characters for the first time again. Right. Uh, with DC, I had touched every character basically in the universe. Um, that when it came to DC, it's like, hey, we have this Doctor Strange cover. Yes, it's like send it. I haven't touched Doctor Strange. You know, yeah. is it Hulk? You know, the Thing. All right. this stuff is coming up that I haven't touched before. Yeah. That it's exciting to me because I was it, I go back to my you know. My kid years, reading those books and, 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 and drawing those books and right. talking about them with my brother, all that kind of stuff comes back to me. It's yeah. like, oh, that was such a fun time. Yeah. Well, and again, I guess going back to the beginning of the conversation, it's like that childlike love for the craft to begin with and the characters and the yep. IP and all that stuff. That's the thing that drives the uh, actual desire to do it versus like the money or the, you know, exactly. the, you know, the status yep. or any of that yep. stuff. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, and some, some artists do like the, hey, my pieces are worth this much on on you know on whatever uh, some auction website yeah. whatever auction it's kind of oh, that's great and to me it's kind of like yeah, as long as i've been able to provide for my family and and have a comfortable life then yeah that's that's what it's worth it to me yeah yeah uh, yeah I, I guess you know generally i think that people I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to tie your satisfaction to working on cool projects or anything but i think where that gets messy is where you start to tie it to like the only way I'm ever happy is if I'm working on those things. Right. Right. And I think I've been lucky enough that I've been able to work on those things and, and, and done well at them and had success with them. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, you know, um, you just realize that it, it's fun. It's a fun job regardless of what project you're on. Right. If, yeah. if, if you, if you're getting paid to, to draw in color comics for a living. Yeah. Could be worse. There's a lot of worse jobs out there to do. Could be in know? the mines. It could be in the coal mines. <laughs> right, right. There's, there's. I mean, there's a lot of jobs, and, and and you see people doing them, and you respect them that much more because it's like yeah. it's like I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I, it, it's and, strange. And, and it's not a criticism to them because that's what they're doing. Because to them, that might be the, what they love to do. Yeah. And it's like you know, yeah, that's. I love you because you're there to do that job. Yeah. Because we need f people doing all the different kind of things that that, right. that need to be done out there. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it, it, I guess it's um, like I've never had a job like working at Starbucks, and it's I guess it's like a yeah, it, it's amazing just the range of human things that anyone could be doing. You know, right? There's someone out there right now just I guess like loading gunpowder into bullets is their entire job. You know, that's right. their entire life. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, Odd existentially to think about, I guess. But it's a job, right? And someone has to do it. And and, and, and um, there's people out there who love doing that, yeah. right? And that's hey, that's can't, if, can't, can't if you it. found what you love to do, then congratulations, right? You're you're making money in a in a medium or job that that, that you like to do. Yeah, right. They actually might have more fun loading gunpowder into bullets than you might some of the time coloring comics. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah. Don't uh, underestimate. Yeah. somebody's value of a specific job um I, i'm curious i you know we can cut this out if you want but what are your thoughts on ai hate it yeah uh, i hate how um 
in a, a, a medium career job where uh, many, many times we're underappreciated, yeah. um, uh, this kind of puts a, a, that much more of a uh, underappreciation yeah. uh, string to it. Because like, oh, a computer can do it. It's like, well, yeah, right. computer can do it based on the data that it's been given. And the right. data is artist work. Yeah. Let's see how it does with nothing in the database. Right. And yeah, and it would do, it would do right? horribly. It's yeah. like, yeah, you get right. stick figures. Yeah. And so let's try this uh, this app, these apps out with no metadata in it. It's like, all right, draw a, a, you know, a human eye. Right. Something simple. Yeah. But don't have any input in there. Right. The computer can't do it. Yeah. Right. right? If, 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 and so, you know, I feel bad and, and I feel so so much for all these artists whose work is being just stolen. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's stealing. Right. Flat out stealing, you know. Uh, right. Someone made a comparison of it to the, to the music industry and where that they have yeah. these algorithms that recognize whether it's copyrighted material or not. Yeah. And so it, 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 it immediately demands a royalty be paid or something yeah. like that. And so right. that needs to be established for this. Yeah. Because they're charging for their apps. Right. And so it's like, hey, if you're making money off of my art, holy moly, you need to, I need to see something right. or stop using my art. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think it is unethical. And for a lot of people uh, moving forward, it's going to be really rough because I think something like AI is incredibly powerful to the point where companies might just start using it because it's so much cheaper than right. someone else. And right. like I, I think, you know, big companies have to be considering what they're going to be doing about it. And, you well, know, moving forward, I'm just curious what being a creative person looks like in even like two or three years. You know, if something like AI becomes like whether we figure out the legal issues or not. Like, what does being an illustrator look like? What does being a comic artist or color, you know, any of those things yeah. actually look like? Um, well, and uh, as big companies try and get involved in this, it, it's going to be like a cautionary tale. It's like, hey, if you're going to start using this, you realize that you're bringing a lot of light into into um, into your company and, and artists can go after you specifically because of it. Right. Because, hey, you're using my art in your... You know, production process, right. and you didn't ask for my permission. You didn't pay me for any of it, yeah. and they're going to open themselves up to a lot of legal. So, as much as I, I see the the companies talking about it, it it's going to hopefully their legal department's going to be like, whoa, whoa, we need right. to. Yeah, we have to cool it. We need to um, make sure that this mess is sorted out before we 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 go forward. Yeah, you know, and at the end of the day, it's going to be like, well, what if we hire an artist to create? data it's like well why don't you just hire an artist to draw it for you yeah right right it's like you're you're gonna have to go back to what it was before right yeah yeah well and it, to me it feels like if, you know i'm might be a little bit of a pessimist with this but like the cat's out of the bag like i i don't know if consumers care that much about the artist unfortunately you know right and it, it's like even when it comes to music like somebody might really care about neil young but they don't care about neil young's politics or even his like well-being and um you know i i guess yeah again moving forward it's it's such an ex a weird existential thing to live through because artists have been a highly valued part of our society for so long and now it seems like there, there might be a level of automation that you know makes it very hard to be to make a living as an artist right yeah i mean it's definitely going to be something that uh we definitely need to voice and loudly, yeah, our, our objection to it, and and definitely go after these companies that are creating and stealing from from artists. Right. I mean, it, it's downright theft. Yeah, uh, and and uh, I mean, you see these posts, and you immediately recognize artist styles on this stuff, and you're like, right. wow, like, well, the, the, the you know, I I'm somewhat okay with AI as just like a thing to play around with, just personally, but I, I've been seeing things online where people are using AI and claiming it's theirs or they're, you know, saying to the people that are complaining about it, like, oh, just get good. Like, I saw Wayne Barlow's post about it. And, you know, this pr prolific illustrator that's been mm -hmm. around for 40-plus years, and people are saying to him, get good. And it's like, what the mm -hmm. fuck is wrong with these people? Like, uh, right, and it's so much of that's based on ignorance yeah. of, the, of art, right? 
And, and to say that I did this, it's like, well, no, you didn't. Right. The computer did it, and it, and it based it on, you know, five different artists. Yeah. Right. Who you know have been in working for years, yeah. collectively over a hundred years, right? right? And so, so it's like you yeah, know you didn't do squat, you, yeah. You just told it what to do, right? Yeah, yeah. And it took almost no effort, and yeah, you know they're like again. It's it's made me just again curious about things moving forward. Like, are people going to want to learn how to draw when a tool like this is around? And I'm sure some people have been discouraged from pursuing art, knowing that like it's become so powerful which i think is tragic you know the tragedy is that that artist that's going to go to their parents and say i want to study art yeah. in school they're going to say well why you can just buy an ai app for 20 bucks yeah right and the tragedy is that 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 yeah. artist could have been the next and their voice was lost too yeah, yeah. right right well, it, i guess it, co- it goes back to the idea that like you know you're not going to stop drawing in spite of no you know like no matter what no matter right? what it's going to be a part of your life no matter and, and i'll never use an ai because yeah. uh, why would I steal from another artist? Yeah, it, it, it stops being my art at right. that point. So why am I even using it? You yeah. know, it's yeah. I, I I can again. There is the, I guess, utopic perspective of it being a thing that is a tool that might be able to help somebody like realize more of their vision. Um, but I I, I I'm curious about that future. You know, if it if it's manageable. But right now, the like. Um, you know, ethics the of it, yeah. Just, the ethics of it are so messy. It, it's it, it, it's very messy. It's kind of hard to talk about. It is. It, it, you know, it, it, I think we're definitely sensitive to it as artists because you know people scoff at people. You went to art school. Wow. What did yeah. your parents think? It's like, <laughs> right. You know, it's like wow. Thanks yeah. for the patronizing. Yeah. Right. And so now that there's a hey, well, there's an app that can do your job. It's like well, there's an app that's stealing our job. Right. Um, from our job, yeah. stealing from our work. Yeah, yeah, they, so, yeah. I told you so stuff from people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you know, it, it, it like it, it makes it easier for them to be that way, and 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 the ignorance that comes with it. Yeah, is I think what's not hurtful. It's angering. You know, it, it's, yeah. it's yeah. definitely. Yeah, people want to think that they're a Kim Jong Gi because they typed a. Yeah, you know. A yeah, sentence, I like so. to see a computer do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's definitely something that's very, very. Uh, well, I mean, if you if you if you're on Instagram and you follow artists, or if you're on um, uh, so many art box, uh, it's definitely something that's risen to the f- forefront. Yeah. In in our. Um, yeah. Again, I don't know. It's, it's strange. I I think the constant battle with all this stuff is. I, again, I I was talking to nobody about this. That the struggle with being an artist is not doing the work necessarily it's like finding something that you love enough to where if it's potentially threatened in that way it's still worth doing to you you know yes like the thing that you can wake up every day and be thankful that you have the chance to you know paint a plein air painting or color a comic book or you know model a a character like that's the thing that pulls you into it and makes you love it and makes you successful versus just the you know pure ego side of it or the you know, the pure efficiency side of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and after 30 years of doing this, this is who I am as an artist. I mean, I, I'm an artist. Yeah. It's who I am. And so to have someone kind of come in and, and um, downplay that or, or take that away from me yeah. is definitely something that I'm def- that I'm willing to fight for. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess um, I, I think that so something – like true art to me is something that's worth sacrificing for. You know, it's something worth fighting for. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like an ideal or something. Definitely. Um, whether it's like your mornings to go and like do a study of something and go out and paint, or if it's like, um, you know, like it might be brave and artistic to just, you know, say what's on your mind as well. Right. Yeah. And so many artists speak through their art uh, who are too shy or too introverted to speak through yeah. you know the, uh, audio audio uh, mediums yeah. or video mediums yeah 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 for for me I, I don't consider myself a great draftsman by any stretch of the imagination i'm not bad but i think that i'm a lot better at talking than i am at uh at drawing a picture you okay. know and you know like i for a while i 
didn't want to put myself on camera because I assume, you know, there are people way better than me that can do it better or whatever. But, mm. you know, thinking that way just removed my ability to, I guess, um, express myself in this way right. for, for, for a while. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Push yourself past to that next that next level of drawing where where you you think you can't get there. Yeah. But, you know, I think, it, yeah. like I said before, it's attainable by everybody. You just have to really yeah. get better at it. Yeah. Well, I, I guess to a more like positive note, who 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 did this uh, this piece of artwork? Scott Williams. Oh, sick. Nice. Yeah, Scott did a commission for for this particular. And you had asked me before, why do you sometimes take commissions home? So this. This fan is a teacher, okay. And so I know that teachers are, are greatly underpaid and, yeah. and and unappreciated as well. And so my wife's a teacher, and so I'm, I'm very close to that. And yeah. so not only did I offer him like a, 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 a better rate for it, but the, it was kind of the the commitment of like if I don't finish it at the show, I'll make sure that I finish it for you. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think you know, in in my way of kind of paying it back for for seeing. Uh, so many teachers underappreciated. It's kind of like my way of kind of saying thanks. Yeah. And you would rather, I guess, not be paid as much money in order to have somebody who, like you admire, also enjoy your artwork. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, do you have any thoughts on dealing with uh, burn? And it's if you want to focus at any point on what you're doing, just just let me know. Okay. Um, but did you have any thoughts on uh, dealing with burnout? Um, I think burnout comes when your work is not appreciated more than anything because yeah. um, you can work a ton and, 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 and if the person you're working for appreciates you and, and does so and, and rewards you down the line for it uh, whether it be with a, a, a cool project or um, a bonus or an invitation to you know a screening of a movie all these little things that, that, that I've been fortunate enough to kind of be done for me the burnout is 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 a lot harder to to experience, I guess. Yeah, it's easier to just kind of go like, all right, that was just a tough project, um, and so you move on. Um, sometimes, um, and for years, DC was so very giving and kind to me, and and. and when um, AT and T and Discovery took them over, and they handed down you know cost cutting mandates, I was one of the first to be kind of yeah not let go because I wasn't an employee, but it was one of those like you're too expensive for us yeah and and my response was like well I got there because of the work I did for you yeah yeah like right? you, you probably generated millions and millions of dollars in right, value for right. the company. And and I was one of the ones that for years fought for for royalties for colorists, yeah. uh, and then it, it took uh, Paul Levitt's getting let go yeah. to have someone step in and say, yeah, you guys deserve to get paid royalties. Yeah, uh, and so having gone through that and now being told that I make too much, it's like, well, you know, thanks for you know the appreciation of the fact that you know my rates this guy be, is this high because. Yeah. of all the work I had to churn out for you guys. And, and right. you guys, at the time, were rewarding me by giving me better page rates, right. knowing that I was going to have to kill myself. Yeah, and you sacrificed a lot. For yeah, it, right. right. Well, and I, I guess this goes back to a more pessimistic side of the industry is that I don't think companies really care about you that much. Like, yeah. Like, at the end of the day, they're like money-making ventures, and, you know... We're just a number. Yeah, yeah, just a number, just like a you know, a, yeah, an and, issue on a spreadsheet or something. And for years, you know, I, I heard uh, Jimmy Palmiotti say, "Oh, you're just a number to a company," and I was like, "No, no," because DC was treating me like gold. I was like, "No, no, you're wrong, you're wrong." And right. when it happened, I I reached out to him. I said, "You were right. Yeah. I was I was the ignorant idiot that didn't heed your warning." Yeah. Um, you know. I uh, I talked to my dad. You know, I've heard stories from my dad about it. It's like. A, He's telling me he was in a meeting once and he was, you know, artists were arguing for better page rates or something, better better pay. And one of the executives walked up to a whiteboard and, you know, wrote a number on the board. It was like 50000 100000 or something. And the artist asked, you know, what's that number mean? And the executive said, that's the amount of people that would do your job for cheaper, <laughs> you know. And it, it's like a fucking tragedy to me. Like, yeah. 
Uh, often it seems like the people that made these companies incredibly valuable and incredibly cool are the people that get let go first. And then it's like managers and middle managers are the people that end up, you know, yeah. you know, they control the systems. They, you know, are good at cost cutting and all that stuff, but they're not the people that, you know, put the yeah. company on the map. And sadly they don't realize, yeah. Okay. Of those 50,000, how many can do it? Like I do. Yeah. Right. Right. It's like, yeah, you're going to get it cheaper, but it's going to show its cheapness. Yeah, right. And so, you know, uh, sadly, that's one of the things that I've, you know, you, you, you pick up some stuff and you go, yep, yeah, I can tell. Well, and I, I think something like that doesn't happen overnight. It's like a death by a thousand cuts. Like, right. it's like one person, you know, faltering a little bit on the vision of what they want the thing to be. And then that vision kind of like keeps going. It's like a snowball effect. And eventually they're getting rid of the people that, again, made the company the, the valuable, cool thing it was in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's happened at a lot of big companies. Like Blizzard comes to mind for me. Right, like, right. Um, really big, really cool for a long time, really special. You know, uh, obviously, like, Blizzard for a long time was the, like, oh, it's made by Blizzard. It's, it's one of the best things on yeah. the planet. But now it's, like, they've kind of lost a lot of their... Um, their trust for, for their audience. Right. Um, and I'm not saying that anyone who works at Blizzard is a... Like, right. <laughs> no, no. And like, right, right. At, yeah. at some point, it's the mecca of all of all kind of gaming artists that want to go work for there. And then it, it, yeah. at some point, it just it becomes financially... Their financial kind of plan fails. And so they you have to you have to let go of that. Because to, to be able to perform at that level, you, you have to pay. Yeah to have the best yeah yeah and I, I guess yeah something like that is I, I think it's hard to maintain that level of quality for a while just because it um, you know people get older their tastes change they retire they want to go do other stuff and inevitably like when those spots open up uh, it opens up to like you know it, they might be they might have a one in a thousand like a 0.01% failure rate for hiring people but if you have 10,000 people working for you, eventually that 0.01% becomes like 1,000 people or right, 500 right. people or something. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, and it's also everybody else who isn't Blizzard yeah. has you as a target of like, okay, we're going to be better than them. Yeah. And so after a while, you know, someone is going to be that, right? right. It, it becomes that where. Yeah. Well, and I, I, guess, I, I guess it goes back to a more optimistic side of this where you don't have to work for the great companies, the big companies, to do something really badass and really fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, um, it seems like every day I see a new game or comic or something being put out by somebody brand new that's like, oh, wow, that's fucking cool. That's yep. amazing, you know? Yeah, well, a lot of the artists are kind of releasing their own stuff too. You know? yeah. Kickstarter yeah. has become such a big thing that... that um, you are seeing great talents just releasing their own stuff. It's like, why, why am I, why am I making so much money for for these companies and they're, you know, mis treating me or misvaluing me? And so I'm just going to earn it for myself. Yeah. And become yeah. their competition. And I think that's, you know, you saw that with Blizzard, right? All these smaller kind of studios start releasing these incredible games. And um, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's a, uh, I it. it you kind of touched on it earlier in the conversation where, you know, when you were coming up as an artist in the, you know, 90s and 80s and stuff, uh, your only exposure to other artists was, like, people around you. You'd see stuff in magazines, but now it's, like, the fucking internet. It's everywhere. You, know, you could see the best artwork on ArtStation on the front page and then refresh and see a new batch of the best artwork ever done. Yeah. And, like, just the qu sheer quality of everything out there is, like... It's amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it seems like it's become a lot harder <laughs> to compete, but at the same time, like the global market is so cool, you know. Well, it's kind of created the, the, um, the parody that, that any artist can post their stuff. Yeah. And so you're not, you just, you don't have a voice because you're super talented and experienced and, and long toothed in the uh, industry. It's, you know, everybody can, can show their stuff. And, yeah. Uh, I think that's great for um, becoming artists because now their voice is being seen, you know, it's being heard. Their art's being seen by yeah. by so many more, uh, so much quicker. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've heard job, I've heard stories of people being hired by um, big studios 
by uh, posting their work on Twitter, and they're just like a fan yeah, artist, yeah, they, and then they, eventually they, like yeah. the studio reaches out to them, and they're suddenly the art director for a big company. Or, yeah, you know. it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 to me, it seems like now nowadays, like quality and well, they, they, there's that thing that people say. It's like if you have three of these traits, you're golden, or it's like the three traits of, of like having a job where it's like be fast, be good, or be easy to work with. And if you have all three, then you're like for sure going to be yeah. super successful. Yep. Um, and I, 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 uh, I guess consistent would probably be a, a yeah good thing. To well, I think that. with good becomes comes the consistency. I think yeah, that's part of it. But yeah, I, I agree with you. And in, in an industry where you you have to produce on a monthly basis, fast is a very big word. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That looks cool. Thanks. Slowly but surely, you get there. Slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I guess like uh, it seems like teaching has become a big thing online as well. Um, like nowadays, people pay attention. Like it's something like Lightbox Expo or Designer Con or any of that stuff exists. But it seems like a lot of people are interested in the actual personalities of. The, the artists nowadays too mm-hmm. like I, I, I guess back in the day you know you know during line decker's days the only way of becoming a great artist was to have your covers on the front of the set or evening post but now it's like you know uh on instagram you can release everything including you know little tutorials or your art or you walking your dog or any of that kind of stuff and, yeah yeah, definitely. And uh, it happened before even COVID, and I think COVID made it even that much more, you know, pronounced with all these students that had to go to class. Yeah. That way, you, uh, you know, they learned uh, virtually. Yeah. And so it, it kind of made it, uh, well, it, it's okay to do that. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we were fortunate, uh, the, the four of us from Comic Pro Boot Camp were fortunate enough to kind of see that and seize it and say hey well if everybody's learning online we can do the same and yeah yeah for sure it allowed us to kind of yeah. continue this this business that we hadn't foreseen as a as a virtual medium yeah but was young enough to be able to just kind of pivot and just like all right well we just teach yeah, we just it. had to kind of how do we maintain the big question was like how do we maintain our 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 hook because our hook is it's it it's not a recorded video you download and you learn from. Yeah. We're live and we're teaching, and you yeah. can stop us and ask us. Um, right. uh, and 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 then part of the the class becomes the critique session too. So we give you homework, you come back, and we yeah. we give you feedback on it because we want that that interaction with you to see you grow as an artist, to, to see that progression of, yeah. of from you know from when we started four weeks ago to now, you know we want to see growth from you as an artist. And so that, that was kind of, we wanted to make, make sure we were able to maintain that. Yeah. I, well, I heard Ryan talk about it in terms of like trying to recreate the comic or trying to recreate like the comic book studio environment, yeah. you yep. know, like yep. the Wildstorm environment. Yep. Um, which again, it, it's hard to recreate in a sense now because everyone is so remote and so digital. That, right. Um, I know I, if, if any, of the artists said, "Hey, we're thinking of putting a studio together. Do you want to join us?" I'd jump, I, in a heartbeat, I'd be like, yeah. "Let's do it." Yeah. How much? Well, how much a month? And I'm in. I'm gonna help Ryan build his uh, YouTube channel, actually. Okay, cool. So if, if there's opportunity to, you know, have you record you do your art, or you know, try and figure out a way to make it worth it monetarily, I think uh, that'd be super sick. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely into that for sure. I, I, and, and you know, with Twitch out there and all that stuff. You, I've always wondered, like, what what would be the best way for me to, to do something like that? Because um, most of the stuff that I work is stuff that won't come out for a couple months, and yeah. so unfortunately, I can't do a lot of live stuff that way. Yeah, like something like this, I can because it's something that doesn't necessarily hold a copyright or a, a non disclosure. Yeah, a restriction. Um, but yeah. you know, if it's something that we record, we talk about, and then gets released down the line once the, the particular image is, is out. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, there are probably, like, millions of people actually on the planet that would love to learn from you in some way, you know? Like, people that pay X amount of money to go to Art Center or CalArts or whatever that want to be comic book colorists that, you know, would love to 
sit down with you for an afternoon and just hear your thoughts on coloring. Yeah. And, and we offer that with the Comic Pro Boot Camp. We have yeah. one-on-one sessions where it's just me and the student. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is about you. What do you want to learn? What can I teach you? What do you, you know? And so uh, we, we kind of saw that need as well. As some of the uh, artists that we were teaching were like, hey, well, would you be open to me spending an hour with Wills? Yeah. And, and we sat down and we're like, you know, we could offer one-on-ones. And, yeah. so, and so we do. And, and it's cool because, like you said, you know, that, that one-on-one, that interaction with the artist, that, that, that very special, like, well, I suck at hands. Right. And, and, and it's like, all right, draw a hand so I can see what you're doing. And then you kind of see, all right, this is where I'm seeing where you're kind of diverging from where it's, it's making it hard for you. Well, yeah, I also think it demystifies it a little bit too. Like you see right. the final result, you don't see all the stages and all the right. you know, and that's, boring parts. That, that's why you say draw the hand. You yeah. want to see the steps that they're going through yeah. to see where the where the miss is. Yeah. So, all right, all right, yeah, I can see that your hands are not the best. Yeah. So okay, what can we do to... Right. To remedy that, to fix it, right? To to get you to the point where you go, I love drawing hands. I'm yeah. great at drawing hands. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any other pieces you want to want to start? Or? I got to finish this one. Nice. Okay. So background. Yeah. No. I, well, and I, I think somebody would also just be interested in like seeing a recording of you do that as well. You know. Yeah. Like, like it, it's very hard to like spend an afternoon with a lot of people. Whereas like, you know, maybe like you have something you say in every Mm one-on-one that you know it's like work on your colors study composition study color theory all this stuff maybe if there was like a like a visual recording of that uh that you could just point people towards and then the you know one-on-one session is is like critiquing that work you know right 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 that like them trying to apply those things to their own own work yeah and I've, I've done kind of videos uh, and been recorded live as I color like an image. Yeah. Um, and I have recorded myself like my screen as I'm working yeah. um, uh, and, and uploaded that kind of stuff as like uh, um, time-lapse videos. Yeah. And so there's there's some of that in, in, uh, out there. Uh, but there's always, a, you know, all the technical questions. So that, like you said, I can definitely sit there and go, all right, this is how you set up the file right and go from there yeah how are we doing on time we're good, good. uh yeah. we've been going for about an hour or so yeah all good nice nice um do you have any uh well i think i can get this out if you don't want to mention it but uh do you have any plans this weekend any, doing anything fun or uh saturday morning we're throwing the dog in the car and driving up to the Denver area, nice. Castle Rock, Colorado. So we're gonna go spend the holidays with my daughter and and her family up there, and all all, all our family is gonna converge there. Nice. Yeah, and so awesome. you know, those of us that complain that a high of of sixty one here is is, is <laughs> oh, cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, dude. I'm cold <laughs> right now. We're, hit, we're hitting highs of thirty two oh, over dude, there with real. lows of nine. Yeah, dude, nine. Yeah, like I, single digits. I could not live in a cold place. I lived in Connecticut for a while. Oh, my dad That's was right. in DC, and it was horrible. I mean, I, oh, really? I like it got below freezing. It snowed a lot. Like if you fell asleep outside, sort of thing, you would die. Right. Well, and I think it's so humid and cold there that you feel the cold more. Yeah. We're in Colorado. It's a dry cold. Yeah. So it's a little bit more memorable. Obviously, yeah. you're in the mountains, so that's a different kind of cold because it's thinner air too. Yeah. Right. It's um, brutal. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, uh, flip-flop tax is, I think, worth it most of the time. <laughs> That's right, flip-flop tax. Hey, uh, uh, have you ever heard that before? <laughs> no, oh, but yeah, I usually right. complain. I say, don't I pay high taxes for the weather to be a little bit higher than this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, or when it's super hot, it's like, hey, somebody didn't pay, pay the, uh, the electric bill, turn the, the, the AC back on. Yeah. There's um, one. Nice. There'll be one happy Colorado customer. <laughs> um, well, I, I, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people, like, I think a big part about being an artist is making it work financially, you know? And, mm-hmm. like, a people, some people just don't want to work for companies, you know? And I think right. there's a massive opportunity for working at conventions, you know? Yes. Doing commissions, selling prints, and all this kind of stuff. And I think a lot of people overlook that because they don't think they're good enough, they don't think they should get a table, they don't think a lot right. of things. And, right. Well, and um, I think when I first started out, I was like, oh, I don't want to do commissions, I'm not good enough. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine just said, hey, look, 
They're pancakes. Yeah. Right? Some pancakes are good. Some turn out not so good. Yeah. But you still make the next pancake after that. Yeah. Because so just look at them as pancakes, right? Yeah. You, this was a bad pancake. The next one's going to be a good pancake. Yeah. And, and you eventually get to the point where you're just churning out good pancakes. Right. right? And you become the, the restaurant that's known for the good pancakes. Yeah. And, well, and, and at least, like, decent pancakes. Yes. You know, like, yeah. A, yeah. like your worst is better than a newbie's right. best. Right, you know? right, 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 right. Um, yeah, and and convention the convention scene's been become about commissions now. Yeah, it, it went through a sketchbook phase, it went through a print phase, yeah. and now we're in the the commission phase. And yeah. and unfortunately, it's it's a harder phase because you have to actually physically work while you're there. Yeah, the other ones are great because you just print the stuff, you show up, and hey, make some money. You just yeah. make money for sitting there, right? And yeah. and and and. Um, uh, now you kind of have to work, but it's cool because it's it's rewarding stuff. Like I said, you know, you get to meet the fans and, and create a, a unique piece for them. Yeah. And, and so that uniqueness, that oneness of them is, I think, what they appreciate about the commission. Yeah, yeah. And I, I guess for anyone that's thinking about doing this, doing that, that's listening to this, it's like, just start, right? Like, just do it. Yeah, just do it. Yeah. Fuck it, you know? Yeah, start in a small convention, yeah. you know, and get yourself in there and yeah. and create some product ahead of time so that people can see what right. you can do. Yeah. And that's what's going to get it. I get more commissions by working at the table. Yeah. Because they see me doing it and they see the stuff that I'm turning around. Yeah. That, that, that I, that's what gets the, the, right. the customers in, right? That's what yeah. kind of brings them into the store, if you would. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like something like a convention is really scary because you're putting yourself around all these great artists. And it can be very intimidating. Right. But like even right. just being there, like again, being the fool, like being the like – worst one in the room is is a very educational and beneficial experience if yeah. you're able to manage it i think yeah 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 yeah, mm. yeah. i've been I've, I've sat next to young artists and they're like oh my god sat next to you this is yeah. gonna suck i'm like no i'm like yeah. unless you're a colorist this is good for you yeah right uh, and i and i always say like if you want to draw something and i can color it yeah. and you can put it out there yeah you know Right. You, can, you, can, you can, yeah, you, you can, you can sell it as a piece, but you can also sell it as a, hey, this is what I can do, yeah. you know, uh, and and you know, just kind of, yeah. Uh, I don't really have any more questions. Okay. So, uh, well, cool. Yeah, yeah. I uh, appreciate you doing this. Yeah, of course, of uh, course. How should people follow you? Uh, uh, Instagram and Twitter. My my tag is Sync Color S I N C C O L O R so two C's in the middle uh, on Facebook I am Alex Sinclair and I'm maxed out on followers yeah. so every couple of days I go in and see the, if there was any attrition and, and yeah. slowly add folks yeah. so if you're on my Facebook wait list and you've been there for a few weeks be patient yes. I'll get to you yeah. <laughs> well and if somebody wants to learn from you Comic Pro, Comic Comic Pro, Pro Boot Camp for sure uh, you know Will Sportacio Ryan Benjamin Carlos DeAnda and I uh, hold classes we we do all sorts of levels, so we do beginner courses, we do intermediate courses, and then we do advanced courses, and yeah. we, then we do like the boot camp where we bring you in and and beat you down yeah. and and treat you like like you know a, a true artist and give you an assignment and and kind of walk you through it uh, as you would through if you were hired by a company and nice. you know we kind of teach you how to get through all those steps and how to improve your work. I mean, our goal is to build you up as an artist. Yeah. Uh, and part of that process is a little bit of, of, of breaking down. Nice. Well, uh, thanks yeah. again, man. I appreciate it. Nah, thank you, man. Always fun well, hanging out with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Chatting with you. 